As far as intonation goes, um, there have been some attempts to change the way we look at intonation. Uh, although most people are still trained on something that looks a bit like the O'Connor and Arnold system, many people have felt that a, radical, a radically changed uh, system of uh, analyzing intonation could be devised. I want to look briefly at, uh, at two of them. Uh, one of them is the system which was developed in America uh, and given the name Toby. Um, how many of you uh, know Toby? Have met Toby? Okay, so I'd better not assume that, uh, that you know what I'm talking about. This is a system for transcribing and analyzing intonation that was developed by a number of people whose essential background was in autosegmental phonology or metrical phonology. In other words, they were people concerned with a theoretical approach, not with a practical um, uh, classroom-based approach. They were more concerned to integrate English prosody into the general framework uh, of uh, um, generative phonology. What they said was, we can take even complex movements of pitch and break them all down into two components, high and low. It has a simplicity that's immediately appealing. If I say, no, that's, uh, uh, th th that is made up of high and low. If I say, no, that's made up of low and high. No, low, high, low. So far, so good. Uh, it's based on an idea that was developed for the analysis of tone languages in African languages. As you probably know, many languages of Africa are tone languages in a rather different way from Chinese. Um, very often, the tones that you find in African languages can be analyzed simply in terms of two levels, high and low, although the way in which those are integrated into sequences um, is a, a very, very complex one. It's led to some of the rather mythical stories, uh, you know, the talking drums idea, that uh, for long distance communication among um, African tribes, if you have two drums, one with a high sound and one with a low sound, a great deal of the meaning of a message can be transmitted over maybe 10 kilometers just by drumming the correct time pattern and the sequence of highs and lows. Quite complex messages can be transmitted in that way. So these phonologists said, we shouldn't be looking for falls and rises and mid-tones. We can account for everything in terms of just two elements, high tone and low tone. And once they got that idea off the ground, they said, how about English intonation? That's probably just high and low as well. And then they developed a transcription system, and at first it looked great. And some of the philosophy in the development of this was something that I thought was, was, was wonderful. Every step along the way, they had meetings of everybody who was interested in this. The person who was most closely involved in this in the early days was Janet Pierre Humbert, um, but other, many other American phonologists joined in on this. They had regular meetings at which they agreed how particular, and they would listen to lots and lots of sentences and work out how the transcription would work. They had regular tests to see how well transcribers agreed. This is the first time ever, I think, that a transcription system has been produced while regularly testing to see if everybody who's been trained transcribes a particular tonal phenomenon in the same way as the other transcribers. And during the period that this was developed, I, a couple of times I went to America to take part in these uh, as a sort of token representative of British English. And we sat around for days going over stupid sentences um, writing down our transcriptions, handing them in, and then some very clever statistician would produce an uh, account of how much we agreed and how much we disagreed. 